inspiration can be a two-way street. And if you're open to inspiration, you can end up inspiring others. Food writer and recipe developer Teresa Elliott traveled to India as part of her exploration of the culinary world. And now she's helping her readers to discover Asian and Middle Eastern cuisines. We took a look at Teresa's blog and we would like to share with you a selection of her Eastern flavored favorites. Having built a successful handmade food business, Teresa Elliott sold it to finance a journey of personal exploration across the globe. And with its rich culinary heritage, India was a place of particular inspiration for her. After nearly four years of globe trotting, she returned to Cape Town, where she started a family and a new business. And the flavors, textures, and colors of the East continue to influence her cooking. When I think of cupcakes or couscous, my mouth starts to water. This also seems to be the case for foodie Teresa Elliott. When I came across this delectable blog, I had to find out more about the lady behind it, but also about the food. Teresa, what fueled your passion for food? I think as long as I can remember, I've loved cooking. My grandmothers used to cook, my mom was always in the kitchen, everything was homemade. So I was used to being surrounded by cooking and I just really, really loved it from the get-go. What have we got on the menu today? So we're gonna start off with some spinach and feta empanadas and we're going to dip them in a red pepper sauce. We're going to be making our own pastry. So I've got some flour in here. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and my butter, which I've cubed. It is quite nice to do it by hand. It's quite therapeutic almost, but these days we're always in a bit of a rush. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nice to have a few shortcuts. So I'm going to blitz this together. And there we go, it's all done. You can see the butter's all mixed in. So I'm going to add my egg now. And then you want to add about two to four tablespoons of water. Pop this on and then you blitz it again. And there we go. So you can see it's not completely mixed together. Tip it onto your work surface and just knead the dough together for a minute or so until it all comes together. And once it bakes, it's going to be this beautiful, thin, flaky pastry. It's really, really delicious. And then all you need to do is pop it in the fridge while you make the filling, and then we'll bring it out later to roll it. And there you go. All done. All right, shall we get started on our filling? Please. So I'm just heating up my pan here. We're going to add a drizzle of olive oil. And then we're going to add some crushed garlic and some onion. So this is going to be the base of our filling. And you're just going to saute this for a minute or two until the onion gets nice and soft. Now it's time to add the spinach. I'm using baby leaf spinach today, but you can use regular spinach and just shred it before you put it into the pan. Right, our spinach is wilting nicely, so I'm going to be adding some nutmeg to the pan now. And nutmeg just complements the spinach so beautifully. Don't forget to season with salt and pepper. We're gonna mix that all in. And then we can set our spinach aside to cool. I'm going to add some smooth cream cheese and I'm also going to crumble in some feta cheese. Definitely enhances the creaminess and also kind of just brings the mixture together. So our filling's all done, it's time to get the pastry. So the first thing you want to do is dust your counter with a little bit of flour because we don't want any sticky pastry. Pop it on the counter and then you want to roll the dough out to a thickness of about four millimeters. Okay. So I was always taught when I was studying food that you roll it twice and then you rotate it 90 degrees. I am making notes. Tick. I don't always follow the rules, but every now and then I do. <laughs> this dough doesn't have any sugar, so it lends itself very well to sweet and savory pies. I've actually done some mousses with this, and then you pop them in the oven, and they're much healthier that way. Oh, that sounds delicious. I must try that. Now that we've rolled our pastry, we're going to cut out 10 to 12 centimeter circles. And then would you like to grab that baking tray for me? So we've lined our tray with a little bit of paper and we're going to put our pastry circles on top. So cut out as many as you can, and whatever dough is left, you can scrunch into a ball and re-roll and roll it again. Now it's time to add the filling. So take a tablespoon or so of the, the mixture and put it in the middle of your, or on the side of the pastry. Then what you want to do is just brush a little bit of water around the edges. This is the glue that's going to hold everything together. And you fold it over, and just press it down with your fingers. Can I try? Yes, absolutely. Go for it. <laughs> there we go. So just to make sure that it's extra secure, you can also take a fork and just crimp the edges just to make sure that filling doesn't come spilling out. Okay, so we do the edges. Paint around the edge. Fold it over. And crimp it. 
Ta-da! Well done. The very last thing we want to do is put an egg wash on the pastry so it goes nice and golden. So I've got one egg and one tablespoon of milk in the bowl and you just want to whisk that together with a fork and then just use your pastry brush to brush this over the top. And now it's time to pop them in the oven. So we're going to be making a red pepper sauce to dip the empanadas in. It's a really delicious spicy sauce. So what I've done here is I've taken some red peppers, I've quartered them, and I've cooked them under the grill for five minutes per side. And you can see they've charred a little bit, they're nice and soft, and we're going to leave those to cool while we make our tomato sauce. And I'm going to drizzle some olive oil in, and then we're going to add our onion. Also got some garlic, of course, so we love garlic and some chili flakes for a bit of heat. So I've got the pan on a medium heat and we're going to saute the onions and garlic and chili for about two minutes to soften the onions and to allow that chili to release all its beautiful flavor. So it's time to add the tomatoes. So once you've stirred in the tomato, let it simmer before you add the rest of the ingredients. So I'm going to season with some salt and pepper. I've got some red wine vinegar here and last of all, some cream. So again, just stir that together and let it simmer until it's thickened slightly and then it's all done. Our sauce is thickened nicely. I'm gonna pop it in the blender to make it nice and smooth. And then Zach, can I ask you to add some peppers for me? There we go, time to blend. So that's lovely and smooth. And what I love about the sauce is it's really, really versatile. It's perfect for dipping in this case, but you could have it on pasta, on vegetables. And that color is so vibrant to spice up a plate. Absolutely, it looks beautiful on the table. So I think our empanadas are ready. Shall we get them out the oven? Yeah. Don't those look amazing? Those are golden delicious. Absolutely, let's plate up. Here's our red pepper sauce. This is perfect sharing food, isn't it? I don't think I would like to share those. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Teresa, how did your blog come about? I started the blog just over five years ago. I really wanted a creative outlet for all of my recipe development. And I kind of started thinking, oh, well, I don't know if anyone will read it. And just over the years, it's grown and it's just become a real passion of mine. What is next on our cupcakes and couscous menu? So we're going to be making a really quick and easy soy and cashew chicken with jasmine rice. Yummy. Let's get the chicken onto the heat. Now this meal ticks all the boxes for me for a good weeknight meal. It's quick, very important. It's ready in under 30 minutes. It's easy, it's nutritious, and it's got loads and loads of flavor. We're going to add some garlic, some soy sauce, and some honey. And let that bubble away for a couple of minutes. That's starting to look good and it's smelling great. Can we eat already? So it's time to add our veggies. I've got some portobellini mushrooms. And these have a beautiful earthy flavor. And I'm also going to add some spring onions. Stir that all together and let it simmer for another few minutes. I'm now going to add some lime juice to the pan. Then finally, add your spinach and cook it until it's wilted. Right, shall we plate up? Yes. So over here we've got some jasmine rice. It's been cooked in coconut milk and water. And we're going to stir in some toasted cashew nuts for a bit of crunch. <laughs> My mouth is already watering. Teresa, for you, what is the essence of mouth-watering food? For me, I think it's flavor, and I can't live without spice. I put spice into everything. And the other important thing is that it must always be made with love. Speaking about love, I love dessert. Me too. What's for dessert? Right, we are making a spiced pear and coconut crumble. Sounds amazing. Let's do it. What makes this a little bit different is we're using a lot of spice. Let's get our pears into the pan. And then we're going to add some water, a bit of sugar, and of course our whole cloves and our star anise. And of course we will take those out right at the end. So you want to just keep cooking that until the juices have reduced into a beautiful syrup. While this is simmering, we can start on our crumble topping. Super. So let's throw some flour into our mixing bowl. Then we're going to add some brown sugar, some coconut, our spices, cinnamon and ginger. And then last of all, we're going to add our butter that we've cubed. And now? Get in there, use those fingertips and rub it all together. Mm. 
And basically what you're looking for is you want the mixture to resemble breadcrumbs. This is just an excuse for me to lick my fingers. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. <laughs> Well, that crumble is looking perfect. Let's get our pears off the heat. And don't forget to remove the whole spices before you put the crumble on top. All right, can you pass me the crumble, Keith? So sprinkle this on top of your fruit. Nice even layer. Our crumble layer is on, so all we need to do is bake these for half an hour. But luckily, I've got one already made in the oven. Smells delectable. <laughs> you can see it's golden, the syrup's bubbled up, it's ready to be demolished. Teresa, thank you so much for such a delicious day in the kitchen. Such a pleasure, but before you go, will you help me style these dishes for the blog? I would be honored. What advice do you have for people wanting to experiment with food? I speak to so many people who are just too scared to try, and I would say go for it. Don't worry if it's a flop, it's a learning curve, so just try.